Hey guys, so today we are gonna build this kind of nested sub tabs feature. So we're gonna add on to the dashboard that we built in another video. I'll add that video down in the description. Today we're gonna extend it with the sub tab functionality. You can see there is the sub tab in the URL changing as I click. We've got this repeating group, right, of tabs. A repeating group, a list that's being fed this option set that's holding our tabs. If we go back into our database, you can see them here under option sets, dashboard tabs, there they are. There are the tabs that we currently have. So let's just take a minute here just to conceptualize what we're trying to do. We've got this list of tabs, right, over on the left side of our screen. You know, one of these guys might be activity. Another one might be team, right? And so that we're fully clear, right, the input to this repeating group of tabs is this sort of option set that we've created, dashboard tabs, right, which is an option set. Now, what we're looking to do, if I just get rid of this last item here in the tabs group, is have another list, another repeating group for every tab that we have which is going to hold the sub tabs for a particular tab, All right? And then our normal tabs, of course, continue below. So obviously showing a view here where the team tab is expanded, showing the sub tabs underneath. And if we were to expand a different tab, then we'd just collapse the sub tab group for the, the previously opened tab, and we'd show you know, the sub tabs for a different group. If this third tab was clicked, then this sub tab group would expand below just like we're seeing up here for team. Now I'll just add this arrow back so it's totally clear, right? These are our tabs that we're adding from an option set. We can also feed those tabs as sub tabs. So we're, you know, in our list of option sets, we've got activity, team, reports, that kind of thing, right? We might also have a whole bunch of sub tabs. So if we're thinking about the team tab, we might have like a users sub tab or a settings sub tab, right? So the key thing here is all of these guys are sub tabs. It's just that conceptually, we're treating some of them as sub tabs. And the way that we're gonna do that is using data relationships. So for any tab that we have, like team, it can have a list. In, in other words, it can point to one or many other tabs, right? Tabs in the sense that we're naming it here as a dashboard tab. And that in effect is gonna allow us to use them as sub tabs. Now it's sort of a niche point, but you could have sort of your your dashboard tabs here as one option set where, so this is our dashboard tabs option set. And you could have an, an entirely new option set, which is used to store dashboard sub tabs. And it's really a personal preference. I'll discuss this when we actually go to make this. It's a personal preference, which approach that you use. It really makes very little difference in our logic. It just keeps things a bit more organized within your option sets rather than having tabs and sub tabs all looped in together within the same section of your data tab. You can separate them out because you might have many, many more sub tabs than you do main tabs, right? Because you're accumulating here sub tabs for each individual tab that you have. So if every tab has three sub tabs, then you know, you, this option set is gonna be much bigger than this one. So it's really just a matter of organization. If you're being kind of a, a purist, you might wanna take this approach. If you just wanna keep things a bit more practical and organized, then you might wanna take this approach, at least until Bubble creates some better organization for option sets. We're gonna set it up this way, just because it's a little simpler to, to see what's going on. So let's replicate that. Let's start by going into our option set section and we'll have here a new option set, dashboard, not tabs, dashboard, sub tabs. Okay, and it's really no more effort for us to have this extra option set either because we only have one attribute for each of our dashboard tabs. It's not like we have, now have to recreate all of these extra attributes on our sub tabs. 
So let's say for the sake of argument, okay, we do have those sub tabs that we were looking at before as an example, users, settings, and maybe let's say for the sake of argument, billing, something like that. So we want our team tab, just for the sake of argument, to be attached to these sub tabs, which is then gonna allow us to display them underneath this team section here. So right underneath here, we'll have our sub tabs expanding. So to set that up, very simple, we create a new attribute on our tabs option set called sub tabs, which we're just gonna set to be of type dashboard sub tabs. And it's gonna be a list because a tab can of course have more than one sub tab. Then we go into the team tab here, modify attributes, and then we just add the sub tabs that we want. It's important here, if you want these to be in a particular order, to add them in the order that you want them to appear on your main dashboard page. So I want users to appear first, then I want settings, then I want billing. Okay, and this is just you know a quirk of how Bubble has set this up. If you didn't want this to be the case, if you want a little bit more flexibility, then what you would have to have is, and this goes for your tabs as well, you'd have a new attribute on each of your sub tabs, an order, which is gonna be a number. And then you just say, okay, what order in the list do you want it to appear? Okay, users, we want that to be, you actually want that to be number one, settings, number two, billing, number three, which just so happens to be how they're appearing here as well. And then when you go to actually display uh, your repeating group of sub tabs, which you has, haven't set up yet, then you just make sure that you're gonna add a sorted operator, right? And you're gonna sort them by the number field that you just created. We're not seeing that because we're looking at dashboard tabs here, but just to quickly show you, I might go all dashboard sub tabs, there we go, sorted by order. Okay, and then descending you would set to be no, so that the, the lower the number, the higher up in the list it is. So I'll just undo that because I was just demonstrating this for argument's sake and get rid of that order field as well. Now on the front end, we need to nest a repeating group within another repeating group. So the first repeating group is of course holding our tabs and the second repeating group is gonna hold any sub tabs that might exist. Now what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna add a group within this tab cell and I am going to make sure that it is the last item. We'll just call this group subtab. And the reason for this is be gonna become apparent shortly. Uh, we can just set this to be aligned to parent because the only thing in here, if I just make sure that we are turning off our, our fixed width settings here. When I add in my repeating group, right, we're gonna add it to the middle here. Okay, and right now this repeating group obviously looks ridiculous, so let's, Turn off that fixed width so that it's stretching. And I will actually, actually keep on fit height to content, but just to give us some room to work with, I'll just bump it up for now. I'll bump up that minimum width rather for now. I will set this to be just aligned to parent for now. We're only gonna have one thing in here and that's the text of the sub tab itself. And then I'll just make sure to sort some of the settings here. So we're not gonna have a fixed number of rows. Okay, we're just gonna have, yeah, we will have a minimum height for the row. We can set that a little bit more precisely later, but just to give us some room to work with, we've got that minimum height. Now we can turn off this minimum height. Okay, so the minimum height for this repeating group sub tabs is now the height of one row, which is 60 pixels, awesome. Then the type of content is gonna be sub tabs, of course. Which sub tabs? The sub tabs of the tab group that this is inside of. So we've actually got three layers here, right? We've got the repeating group tabs, and then we've got this group sub tab inside of that repeating group tab cell. And then we've finally got our second nested repeating group. So to make this connection from the repeating group tab cell to the, the sub tab repeating group, we need to pass the data down the chain, so to speak. So. So that group sub tab needs to be of type content tab, okay? Because we ultimately want this repeating group to determine what sub tab it's gonna display based on the parent group's tab, because the tab is holding that list of sub tabs. So we've got 
dashboard tabs as, as the type of content. The source is going to be that current sales uh, dashboard tab. And now this repeating group can now access that parent group dashboard tabs sub tab. So that list of sub tabs. And then I'm just simply going to drag some text in here. I'm going to drag it there on the left hand side. In fact, I'm going to make this layout uh, a column, a column layout instead. And this text is going to pull through the display name for the sub tab in that cell. And I'll just give it also the styling that we've been using for, for our tabs thus far and turn off this God awful default styling that bubble has given us. Okay. And now let's preview that. And there we go. So you can see that underneath our team tab, we've got these sub tabs here. And obviously there's some work that needs to be done to, to beautify this, but so far we're getting the look that we're after. So there's a bunch of extra dead space in between these tabs now. Also, it looks like on my particular setup, for some reason I had this repeating group, this first repeating group with a fixed width and height. We don't need that. So let's just make sure we're playing fair, so to speak. We're not having any weird settings that's gonna affect us. So I believe what's happening here is let's get rid of this minimum height and then on our minimum height for the row, since we've got some content in there now, we can collapse that down. And let's see if that makes any difference at all. Okay, so the spacing for our tab groups is fine. It's just these inner sub tab groups that are now a little bit wonky. So first, let me just change the style of the sub tab repeating group so that we get rid of the divider here. So what we want to do is mimic the, the spacing, to be precise, the padding around these, these tab groups here, and or rather the tab texts and the sub tab, have the sub tab text mimic that. So if we just look here, we've got a fixed height for the tab text. So we'll also add a fixed height for the sub tab text. And that's giving us the look that we're after. The only thing that we don't have is this conditional formatting. And we'll get to that in a moment, actually, because that's going to require that we deal with the navigation logic first. So yeah, the only thing that I might do just before we, we move on here is just add some left margin to our sub tab group so that it looks nested. So that just while we get this moving, we can actually see and differentiate the sub tabs from the main tabs. OK, so far, so good. Now, first of all, we want only these sub tabs to be showing when this team tab is selected. If we're on activity, then these sub tabs sh should just collapse. Okay, We shouldn't see the sub tab repeating group at all. So what I want to do is on this group sub tab here, I want to not set it to be visible on page load and have collapse when hidden. And then I just want to set a rule for when it should actually become visible. And that rule, we should be able to write eloquently because we have this repeating group of tabs already. And if we just cheat, we can kind of see we've got the same condition that we want working within this text up here within the tab, which is determining the styling for this element. This condition right here is exactly what we want to determine when the sub tab group should be displayed, right? Which is when that currently clicked on tab is the same tab that we're actually pulling from the URL, right? That we're actually pulling in here as a URL path. So when that is true, then this element is going to be visible. This element being group sub tab, which is holding all of the sub tab content. So if I now click on team, there we go. We are seeing our sub tabs for team up here. We click off and they disappear. Now, about to reveal to you why we put this repeating group inside of this group. Because as some of you may be asking, we could just add this condition on the repeating group level and have the repeating group collapse when hidden. Okay? And I would say, yes, you can. But what you can't do with a repeating group is make use of this feature here, animate the collapse operation. For whatever reason, Bubble doesn't expose that for repeating group collapsing, but it does expose it for normal groups. So we can use this slide up and down 
collapse animation. And that means now when we click on team, we get this nice slide in behavior. And when we click out, it slides out of view. Very nice. Now, last thing, of course, is to actually be able to click on these sub tabs and have them populate the URL. So we've got this text here with, that's holding our sub tab display. So we can use that to have this trigger event on. And if we look at our action for when the tab is clicked, not the sub tab, then we're making use of this go to page dashboard action here. And we're sending the value of that tabs display field into the URL. That's what's populating this guy here. So what we want to do essentially, right, is have an extra path underneath, which is going to hold the sub tab, right? This is the sub path that we're going to use to show different options on the screen, different views, different elements on the screen. So then what I can do on this, when the sub tab is clicked, so maybe I'll write here, sub tab clicked. And for over here, I'll write tab clicked. So I'll name these events so that we can see them a little bit easier. And then for the one where we're clicked, where we're clicked on the sub tab, we want to first basically add in, if we get data from page URL, we want to add in the path that's already there. So that's going to be that dashboard tabs value. So the display. So we want to add that in. And then we want to add after that, we want to add that forward slash. And then after the forward slash, we want to add the, the sub tabs value, right? So just like I showed before, tab followed by a forward slash, followed by the sub tabs display. And so one way to achieve this is after this expression, I can use this append operator, which literally just takes two arguments, meaning it takes two inputs, two text inputs in this case, and sticks them together. So we can take this tabs display value and then we can append a forward slash. And then after this, I can add more stuff, namely the, the sub tabs um, value. So I have to go append and I have to now grab the current cells sub tab, which was clicked, the display value. And this, then if I click on the sub tabs, you can see the URL up there changing. Now, that works as you can see, but it's not as elegant as it could be. I'm going to clear this. I'm going to use something that's much nicer to use called arbitrary text, which just lets us be way more flexible with writing flexible, customizable text strings. So right here, we can add that first part. So we're getting data, getting data from the page URL. We're getting the path to be specific. And the type is going to be, again, dashboard tabs value. And I'm going to go forward slash, oops, uh, the get data from page URLs display. Then afterwards, simply going to click, add my forward slash, add some more dynamic data. Specifically, of course, that sub tabs display. So this achieves the same thing. So we can click on user settings, billings, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, if I click off of that team tab to a tab that doesn't have sub tabs and then back on team, you can see that that sub tab value is empty. And that might be problematic because we want a default sub tab. Okay. There is no team tab anymore in this logic. The team tab is essentially just a folder. You can think of it as a file directory, a folder of sub tabs. So just like the page here, dashboard is essentially a folder of tabs. And if you remember, we have some logic that when the page is loaded and the tab value is empty, then we manually push one of these tabs, namely the activity tab, to be the default. That's what we're achieving with this page is loaded. So we essentially need to do the same thing, but for the team tab, we need to have a default sub tab for the team tab. The thing is, of course, we want to write that rule to have a default tab for the team tab as a general rule. So it applies to any tab that has sub tabs. And we don't just want to come in here and say, look, when, when the tab is clicked and where, let's say, the tab is team, okay, then I want you to also push the sub tab value. That's um, that's not really that efficient. We want to write this in a general way. So in a general way is how I described it, right? If you, being the tab, have any sub tabs at all, 
then I want you to basically just populate the URL with the first sub tab in your list. That's one way of writing this. What we could do if I take this go to page dashboard action and I copy it here, after the initial kind of page refresh where we populate the, the, the URL with the tab, so this is when the tab is clicked, of course. So after this first action, we can add our second action, which is gonna populate the sub tab, only a couple of things. First of all, we don't want it to display this current cells sub tabs value because that doesn't actually exist in this case, right? We've just clicked on this button here, this tab team. So there is no current cell sub tab that only kicks in once we actually start clicking on these guys here. So what we want to do instead is add a static value here, right? This is going to be our default value. So we might say, okay, we'll grab the the current sales dashboard tabs, sub tabs, first items display, right? First items display. So if I'm on activity now and I click on team, now it's just defaulted to that users sub tab. And this rule would apply now if we added sub tabs to projects or reports, which just for the sake of argument, let's do it. Let's add some sub tabs to reports. I'll just add one settings, let's say. Save that. So if I'm on activity, projects, no, reports, boom. Reports is also having that same behavior. So the last thing that we need to do here, which we forgot to do was add some conditional formatting to our sub tab uh, text. So they look like these tab texts when they're active. So I'm just gonna copy from our initial tab text element. I'm just gonna copy this expression, which is gonna add that conditional formatting. And then we're just going to uh, amend this. So right now, this expression is looking for a dashboard tabs type path. In fact, we want it to be sub tabs, right? And then this should work. Let's see. So if I click on team now, we can see users as the sub tab, but it's not showing up here, neither for settings nor for billing. So if I just go and inspect this, I'll click on one of these. We can have a look and see what's going on here. So get path from page URL. It's actually showing up empty. There's no path that's appearing here. So this is a bit of a nuanced, a nuanced bug, but essentially when we're looking for the path in the page URL, we're looking for everything after the page. So dashboard is the page. The path is going to be this guy here. Okay. So this is the path according to bubble, but we're, and which is of type tab, not sub tab, but we're looking for a sub tab. So bubble's going, nope, there is no sub tab in this path container, if you will. So what we actually need to do instead, and I can show you this actually, I'll just show you this by changing this to be of type dashboard tab. There we go. And then I'll just add this, I'll change this to whatever, just so we can see what's gonna be returned by this part, get path from page URL. So now yeah, we've got users selected, that's great. Let's inspect it. You can see that get path, it's now actually finding that value team, this guy here. So what we actually wanna do instead, I'll just undo um, the section before, is instead of getting the path, we want to grab path segments as list. That's actually going to return everything after that page name. So after dashboard, it's going to return every value that it finds after these forward slashes. So this path and this path are going to be returned, the path segments as a list. And you know, these are actually a list of texts technically, but if we say, okay, it's actually a, a list of sub tabs, we're kind of tricking bubble. It's going to be returning a list of sub tab paths that it finds. Although we know that actually only users is a sub tab, right? Team is a normal tab. So it's not going to be picked up by us telling bubble to look for a list of sub tabs as paths, okay? If we had set things up the alternative way, as I described earlier, where our sub tabs were actually just in the back end, other tabs, 
then we would do things slightly differently. We would actually keep this as dashboard tabs, okay? But what you would do, dashboard tabs like this, it is you would, because it's a list, right? To find the second one or the last one in that list, which corresponds to users, you would just go last item like this, last item. In our case, because that's not what we are, are doing, we are looking for dashboard subtabs, and because it's only going to find one, we don't really need to worry about where it is in the list. But you know, we have to select something to turn it into a single item. So we're going to still choose last item, and we're just going to choose here is right. So we're saying is that subtab that you find in that list, right? This guy here, the last item in that list of subtabs, which is only one item long, as we've just explained. Is that item equal to the subtab of the current cell that we're in? So let's see if that works. Boom, there we go. And obviously our formatting is kind of gross here when these two guys are a little bit close up together. To change that, we might want to underneath the text here. This is one way of doing it. Just add a little bit of bottom padding and that's gonna fix that up for us. There we go. So. Kind of got a little bit muddled there at the end. I hope I hope that that generally makes sense. The difference between path segments of different types and just getting a, a single path value, right? That single path value is looking for the first item in what could be, right? A list of items, a list of paths or path segments as Bubble is kind of inducing us to think about them. So. That's how to do sub tabs. Hope it's been helpful. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, happy bubbling.